Hey everybody, it's Steve DeCasa here. Um, I have a request, to, not really a request, but I did a shot in a short film. I showed it to a buddy of mine, a cinematographer named Tom, and uh, he uh, is just getting into the digital realm of things. He used to shoot, uh, he still does shoot 35 millimeter, 16 millimeter, and he's just now getting into digital, and he's really surprised and amazed at, at all the crazy stuff you can do with Final Cut. And I showed him this shot that I did on a short film, and um, I verbally explained it to him, but I wanted to make a video basically directly for him. But this is also for everyone out there who is interested in doing cool shots. What the shot is, is it's combining regular speed, uh, um, sh a shot that was shot in regular speed with slow motion. Now, I only have 15 minutes to, to show you this, so I gotta go kind of fast, but uh, we're gonna check out the actual final shot right here. So let me show you what the final shot looks like. Now mind you, this is rendered down, it's not super high quality. So check it out. Now as you can see, the uh, main actor down the bottom here is moving in regular motion and the one in the background back here is moving in slow motion. So let me show you the two independent shots. The first thing, the first way I went about doing this was uh, I was shooting the, the, the short film on my Canon 5D but the Canon 5D actually has a, does not have a feature that another camera called the 7D or the T2i, the Canon T2i has. I know a buddy with a T2i, uses it for pictures. I had him come over because I knew we wanted to get this shot. So I borrowed my friend's T2i and uh, we basically shot uh, two independent shots. The first we did in 24p, which is what the camera does. Here's the, the first take. As you can see, there's no actor walking in the background for this shot. Um, it was just, uh, the actor's name was Sergio, just Sergio talking. Then I changed the camera, I, I made sure that the camera never moved. I made sure that my camera was on a tripod, locked, I never touched it. So all, all I had to do was go into the menu and change some settings, hopefully without moving the camera too much, and we shot the next sequence in 60 frames a second. Only problem is the limitation with 60 frames a second is, as you can see, it's only in 720p. But here is part two. That's skipping a bit. Oh, there it goes. So once again, you can see, nice. My processor is having a hard time. But when, but you can see there's the other shot in um, 60 frames a second, 720p. So there's a few things that we need to do to mix the two together. First step in joining these two is making the 720, 60 frames a second slow-mo. Now the reason why you put the camera in 60 frames a second mode is it goes back to old school film. When a camera was going really, really fast, going 60 frames a second. When you play it back at 24 frames a second, it looks like slow-mo. So the same technique applies in the digital world nowadays if you can shoot with 60 frames a second. It's called high speed. A lot of times, if you've seen Jackass 3D, they did a lot of stuff in really high speed, like 1,000 frames a second. There's a show called Time Warp on Discovery Channel that uses high speed cameras. Now you think, well, it's slow-mo, why is it called high speed? It's because the film or the rate at which it's capturing is at a very high speed, and when it plays it back at a normal speed, it slows it down. That's why it's called high speed photography. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go into your folder where you have your 60 frames a second footage, and you make a copy of it, because in, in conforming the file, is what it's called, it alters the original file. So you just always wanna keep an original copy of your file. So I, this one was already a copy, so you can see. So what you do is you want to open this up with Cinema Tools. And very simply, right on the bottom here, should zoom in, is Conform. It's pretty simple. Hit Conform, and it says the current frame rate is, frame rate, 
Oh my god, that's bad. Frame rate is 60 frames a second, and you want we want to conform it to 24 frames a second. Well, really, 23.98, because really quick, let me show you the actual original file. I'll show you really quickly. If we come over here, of course it doesn't want to show me now, but I'll have to open it up. The original file, if we go to the movie inspector, is right over here, 23.98 not actually 24 frames a second. It's the digital world. Um, just make sure you match everything up. So once again, you come over to um, Cinema Tools, you're, you want to match everything up. So 23.98, uh, which is 24p, and then conform it, and instantaneously it is now conformed. And you can see it's in slow-mo. Now, it was skipping before because of my processor, not because of the actual file. So when you see this, it actually looks like smooth slow-mo. It's nothing that Final Cut can do. Final Cut will make it blend and look weird, but that is a nice, smooth slow-mo. Um, the second thing we need to do is we need to get the 720p up to 1080p. Um, as you can see here, like I said, the original shot, the original take, it was locked down. If we come over here is 1080, 24p. So there's a program that you can download for free. It's called MPEG Stream Clip. I have it. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that. OK, the first thing you want to do to up res it is you want to go into where you have it right here. This is the original that is untouched, and this is the one that we conformed. And you want to make a new folder in here. I like to call it up-res, because that makes the most sense. You know, you got to always keep yourself organized and things like this, because with all these crazy files and all these names and things, you can get really confused. So there's up-res. OK, this is the file that um, we conformed. This is the one that is in slow-mo. Over here, we can see, yeah, slow-mo. And down here, you can also see 720p. We're about to change that. So once you download and you install MPEG Stream Clip, which is free, um, it'll and you put in your applications, you go to open with, and it'll be something you can open with. So let's open it with the um, MPEG Stream Clip. Here it is. Move myself out of the way. And um, what you want to do is you want to come over here and you want to export it to QuickTime. There's also a way you can do a batch list with um, MPEG Stream Clip, and you can conform, convert up res or whatever, convert um, many, many files at a time. MPEG Stream Clip is a file format conversion program. It takes one format of video or whatever and converts it to another. And the tool is very useful because um, something I should explain. With the 5D right now, with cinematography with the 5D, the camera, or the 7D, or the T2i, the camera shoots in the H.264 codec, and it's very compressed. It's, uh, it's a really, really good compression and high quality, but um, what for some reason, if you try to edit in Final Cut with those files raw, as they say, um, even with a very fast processor, it doesn't like it. It tends to skip. When you get the, to the end of a clip, it tends to j jitter before the next edit. So you can never really tell the flow of editing. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a problem that exists right now that probably won't be around in a few months and maybe a year. But at the moment, there are a couple of different methods to change that. And one of the workflows that people choose is they take all of their footage, their raw footage from the 5D that they shot, and they convert it using MPEG Stream Clip to a certain codec. The codec I use and the codec that this film was shot on is called Apple ProRes 422. So this needs to be exported and changed in the compression here to up here, Apple ProRes 422, because it's going to match all the other footage from my short film. Match this up, sorry. So to match this up, tools. Now I'm pretty sure over here, usually we unclick this because we're shooting 24p and uh, 30p and all that stuff, and it says to de deselect because it's p progressive. But in this particular instance, I'm I'm fairly sure that since it, the original file was um, 60i, that really this doesn't even matter. It's been conformed anyway. And uh, honestly, in in doing this tutorial. Uh, Obviously, I practiced all this before I made this tutorial. In doing it, 
I didn't deselect that and nothing really happened. So I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. Uh, just make sure, very important, the quality is all the way up. So once again, Apple 4 Res, Apple Pro Res 422, quality is high, um, 1920 by 1080. I'll say leave this alone for now. I might get people saying no or whatever, and we make the movie. Uh, okay, so we gotta tell it where it's gonna go. Mine was in the test top, and hey, look at that. Already made a folder. Told you to do that before. So it's just gonna go right into Upres. And um, save that, and here you go. It's gonna start encoding up here. And uh, whoa, that's big. It's gonna start encoding, and I'll save you the trouble of watching that.